Hello, welcome to another video. Let's imagine a scenario where you have a backend system that consists of multiple microservices and they are all making calls to each other. And we want to see what happens when one of those microservices starts to fail. We can do this using a category of tools called fault injection tools. And in this video, we are going to cover the fault injection features of a proxy server called Envoy. Okay, so let's look at the setup that we're going to be using today. Um, we're going to have a service A and a service B. So service A here is the client and service B here is the server. And in the middle here, we're going to have Envoy. So Envoy will be proxying requests from service A to service B. Now, if you're not familiar with Envoy, Envoy is a proxy server and it's quite a capable proxy server. But uh, for the purposes of this video, we're just going to be looking at its uh, reverse proxy features and its support for fault injection. Okay, so now let's look at the specific tools that we're going to be using to simulate service A and service B. So for service A, I'm going to be using curl and hey. So if you're not familiar with hey, hey is a HTTP load testing tool. Um, for service B, I've created a simple Flask application which consists of two endpoints. Okay, so we're going to look at three types of faults that we can simulate using Envoy. Uh, the first is that we're going to simulate service B misbehaving by returning a different status code. Um, second, we're going to simulate service B being slow by adding delays to the HTTP requests. And thirdly, we're going to simulate slow connections between service A and service B by throttling the response rate between service A and service B. Okay, so for each of the um, fault types that I described in the previous slide, we can tweak them using three methods. So the first method is using the Envoy configuration file. Uh, the second method is using the admin interface where we can alter the behavior of those faults using runtime settings. And finally, we can also configure and tweak the uh, faults using HTTP headers. Okay, so that's enough theory. Let's look at an Envoy configuration file, just a basic one that will allow us to proxy requests from service A to service B. So here is a basic Envoy configuration file which just configures Envoy as a reverse proxy. So here we're just setting the port uh, that Envoy will be listening on. And here you can see there is a configuration for a HTTP connection manager. So what this does is that it turns Envoy into a HTTP proxy. And below here, you can see the list of the filters. So we'll be using this later when we want to inject faults. And you can see the routing configuration here where we're basically just routing any request to cluster A. And at the bottom here, we have the configuration for cluster A. And here you can see the IP address of the backend servers in that cluster. And here is, uh, it's actually pointing to the Flask application that I showed you earlier, which is listing on port 5000. So any requests on port 9090 will be forwarded to the Flask application running on port 5000. So let's start the um, let's start the Envoy proxy server. Okay. So now it's running on port ninety ninety, and we can try to invoke it using curl. Okay. So at this point, we now have a working reverse proxy. So let's try to inject our first fault. Uh, 
So the first fault we're going to be looking at is returning a custom status code. So first off, let's look at the status code that is being returned by the Flask application at the moment. Okay, so you can see here that the Flask application is returning the status code 200. Okay, so now let's configure Envoy uh, such that we can simulate service B returning a different status code. So the way we do that is that we need to edit the Envoy configuration file. And we need to add an additional filter and that filter will allow us to configure certain faults to be injected into any HTTP request. Okay, so what I've done here is I've added the HTTP fault filter and I've configured the abort fault so that it will return the status code 400 and what the percentage uh, configuration means there is the percentage of requests where this fault will be applied. So in this case, 100% of the requests will have this fault applied. So as you can see, now that when we invoke the same endpoint, instead of getting 200, we're getting 400. So of course you can customize the percentage of requests that should have the fault applied. And you do this by just changing the numerator parameter in the configuration file. And let's do that uh, very quickly. So we just changed this to 50. And let's start it back up. So let's use hey, and with hey we can um, we can trigger the endpoint multiple times, and we can see that a certain percentage will be returning 400, and a certain percentage will be returning 200. Okay. So you can see it's 50-50 uh, most of the time. We can also tweak the status code and the percentage using runtime settings. But to do so, we need to enable the admin interface. And once we enable the admin interface, if we want to change the status code or the percentage, we don't need to restart the server. We just have to hit a certain endpoint in the admin interface. So let's do that. Let's enable the admin interface. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're enabling the admin interface on port 8001. Okay, so now that the admin interface is running, we can uh, tweak the abort fault um, using run by altering the runtime settings. So the way we do that is that we can just use curl to invoke a certain endpoint on the admin interface which will allow us to set the runtime setting to the value that we want. Let's first try to modify the HTTP status that the abort fault will return uh, using runtime settings. So the way we do that is we just need to trigger the runtime modify endpoint with the correct runtime setting. We're posting to this URL runtime modify, which is on the admin interface, and we're setting this setting to 504. Okay, so now let's set the percentage to 100 so that all of the requests will have the fault injected. So we invoke the same endpoint on the admin interface, but we just change the runtime setting. Okay, so now if we were to invoke the service B endpoint, we should get 504 all the time. Okay, so as you can see, it's returning 504 for all the responses. The last way to configure a fault is using HTTP headers. So for that, we need to alter the configuration file a bit so that Envoy knows to expect the status code and the abort percentage in the HTTP headers.
we also need to change the percentage here because um, if we keep it at 50, then the percentage that we specify in the header will be capped at 50. So we won't be able to, for example, set the percentage to 80. So now that header abort is configured, we can configure the status code and the abort percentage using headers. So let's first try to set the uh, status code. Okay, so as you can see, 100% of the requests fail with the status code 500 when we specify the uh, 500 as the value for this header. Now let's try to configure the abort percentage. So let's take the same uh, request that we had just now and let's add the HTTP header for configuring the abort percentage. So let's say that we only want this fault to be injected 50% of the time. So what we'll do is we'll add a header to configure that. Okay, so this is the header that we use to configure the percentage and the value is 50 for 50%. Okay, so as you can see now, that fault, the abort fault, is applied to only 50% of the requests. So the names of these headers for all the uh, faults that we're going to cover, it's all documented on Envoy's website. Um, I'll link to that in the description uh, below. So that covers the three ways to configure the abort fault. Okay, so next let's look at the delay fault. And here we're going to just use the header approach to configure it. So let's alter the Envoy configuration file. Okay, so now that I've alter the Envoy configuration file, we can now um, include certain, um, certain headers into our HTTP request, which will tell Envoy to delay the processing of that request for a certain number of milliseconds. Okay, so this is the header that we use to configure the number of milliseconds of delay that we want to add. And the value of that header is the number of milliseconds. And of course, we can configure the percentage of requests where we want the delay to be applied. So for example, if we only want 50% of the requests to have the delay applied, then we can just set this header here to 50. Okay, so in that case, the header was applied. I mean, the fault was applied. So let's try again. Okay, so you see that time, it the, the fault wasn't applied. Okay, so finally, let's look at the response rate limiting fault, which allows us to limit the speed at which Envoy will deliver the response to the client. And this lets us simulate a slow or congested connection between the two services. So let's add the configuration for that to the Envoy configuration file. Okay, so I'm also going to configure the timeout because if I don't do this, then when we are um, throttling the, um, the download speed, the server will time out. Uh, the connection to the upstream server will time out before it has a chance to complete uh, the, re the, re the response. So we can see this in action by first downloading a large file without the rate limiting. 
So this is the request without the rate limiting. And as you can see, it happens almost immediately. So now let's throttle the response. Uh, let's rate limit the response to 1000 kibibytes per second. So the way we do that is that we need to specify a header. And as you can see, the download speed is much slower. Now it's going to take around 40 seconds or 40 to 50 seconds to complete. So that's pretty much what I wanted to show in this video. If you found it useful, I'm in the process of summarizing um, all of this material into an ebook. And it's going to be around 20 pages long. And for each of the faults, I'm going to show you how you can configure each of them using all of the three methods. The idea is that the video will get you up to speed on the topic, but the ebook will serve as a quick and complete reference that you can just copy and paste code snippets from. So the ebook won't be free, but it will be very inexpensive. So if you enjoyed this video and you want to support this channel, do consider buying it.